everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to use Google Photos. It's one of my favorite apps out there, at least in the last five years or so. So I wanted to kind of give you a complete guide on how to use Google Photos and why you should use Google Photos, all the benefits that come with it. Now, Google Photos is available for the iPhone and tablets like the iPad, for Apple devices, and it's also available on Android devices. Actually, on Android here is the default app for photos called Google Photos. You could always access it too on the computer at google.com slash photos. Now there are four really big benefits of using Google Photos, so let me say what those are first and then we'll walk through using the application here. The very first one is it's a great way to free up space on your phone, especially if you have an iPhone and you don't have the upgraded iCloud to put your photos on there, you could use Google Photos completely for free. It has unlimited storage up to a certain quality that we'll talk about for backing up all your photos and all your videos too, really incredible. The second benefit of it is it's one of the easiest way I've ever found for syncing up your phone and your computer with the same photo library. So you have photos on your computer you want on your phone, this will do it for you. You have stuff on your phone you want on your computer, this will do it for you because the Google Photo platform is on the cloud. So when you sync it all up, it all is under the same umbrella under your Google account. Now the third benefit is it makes photo sharing so, so easy. It doesn't matter if you do it on the computer or your phone, photo sharing, individual photos or entire albums, the sharing of photos becomes so, so easy. And number four, and my favorite way I use Google Photo is because it organizes things automatically in a way that it will take you forever to do. What I mean by this is it organizes pictures by when they were taken, where they were taken, who's in the photo, the type of photo it is, it will just do all of that for you automatically and makes it really nice and easy to search things in the future, something that's really hard to do with different photo apps. So those four reasons are why I use Google Photo and I think you should too. So let's jump in here and start using it. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get the Google Photo app. You can do this on the computer, but I find it a lot easier with the mobile app. And go ahead and download it. If you already have an Android device, you already have this app. Just look for Google Photos on your Android. On the iPhone here, I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And the first time you do log into this app, it's gonna ask you to sign in with your Google account. Again, this is all under the same Google email. If you have a Gmail, for example, use that to sign into your Google account. If you don't have one, you will need to create a Google account. Once you do, you should land here, which is the homepage of Google Photos. So make sure you do that first. Now here, the first thing you wanna do is we wanna turn on backup and sync. Backup and sync basically means it's gonna scan your device. It doesn't matter if you're on the Android again or the iPhone, they look the same, they work the same. It will scan your device and copy everything from your phone or tablet or computer onto Google Photos using backup and sync. Let me show you how to turn it on. Click your profile icon right here. And right here, mine says backup complete because I already turned this on, but yours is gonna have an option for backup and sync. Click it and click settings on top there if it takes you here, but you wanna look for backup and sync and make sure the slider is turned on here and it will automatically in the background start it scanning your photos and videos and backing them up. Now, let's talk about the quality of how things are getting backed up. Right here, it says upload size. Let me click this to explain something. It's going to upload things based on a certain resolution. Photos is 16 megapixels, which is pretty high, it's high quality, but it might not be the original quality, especially if you took things in a higher resolution or even raw format with the newer iPhones. So you do have to sacrifice that if you want to use this with the free unlimited option. If you do use the original, you see this number here, it says 15 gigabytes. I have 15 gigabytes of storage for free. If I go over that, the original is gonna ask me to upgrade and pay. And it's a couple bucks a month here for getting 100 gigabytes if you wanna do that. But I don't care about that. The high quality is perfect. But when it comes to videos, you gotta be careful there because it won't back up the 4K videos, only 1080p. 
Now, this is again, depending on what you're doing, but usually I don't take videos in 4K and this may change in the future, but that's the case right now. So pay attention to that, change this to original if you want. And if you get to 15 gigabytes here, you will have to update. Okay, so back to the home page. Let me show you what you're looking at here. The things you see on top, these are kind of like Instagram story or Facebook story where you're going to see a highlight of things from your recent past. So a year, two years and so on are going to show up over here. You could click any of them to watch those. That's just a preview of what you've done with this app in the past and using backup and sync. But your recent photos, for example, for today, I was taking some photos in the office here and you could see those over here just from that section and everything is going to get organized. If I keep going, it's going to show yesterday, the day before and so on. But I think you get the idea here of what this home page is going to show you under the photo tab. I do want to click on one because I do want to show you some of the options you have over here, which let's go ahead and do it with this photo here. You could go ahead and edit photos. If you click this option right here, there's a bunch of pre existing filters that you could apply to any photo. So beyond all the things that I showed you as a benefit of this app, you also have that. Here you have things that make it lighter or darker. You could change the color, making things black and white and so on. So let's say I want to make this black and white. And you have this rotation here where you could go ahead and crop things differently or rotate them if you like, just to make things look perfect. And I'm going to press done. And let's go ahead and press save on top. And I'm going to make this a copy so it saves the original colored one here as well. So that's the option on the bottom. You could always use Google Lens here where it basically recognizes what's in your photo and you could see it scanned it and found some things for me. That's the Google Lens that's very, very power, powerful here in this section as well. One of the other reasons I like this because it could actually recognize what's in my photo. You could always delete things here, but be careful because if you do back them up from your device and you remove them from your device, which on the iPhone especially is going to tell you, do you want to remove it from your device to save your space? This is the only place your photo is going to be if you remove it from your device. Now I'm super paranoid. So what I did is I actually used Google photo as a primary way to back up my photos, but I also paid for iCloud and I back up my photos on iCloud too in the Apple ecosystem. So I have it in two different places. That's the way I back things up. You don't have to do that if you just trust this and want to remove things from here, but it was worth a couple of bucks for me to upgrade on iCloud and I'm using the free version of Google Photos. Now let's see what else we have on top. We could press this play option. Some photos that were taken with some of the cameras that have this live option, it will show you this quick view. I'm going to pause that. You could cast something. So this lets you cast it to different devices, maybe that you have around the house using Wi-Fi. And you could favorite this on top if you want to add it to your favorite right there using the star. And the three dots here give you some options. For example, it shows you the original resolution and how this was taken. It shows you what device it was taken on and it shows you how it was backed up. In this case, the high quality because I didn't change that in the setting. Now you could add it to albums here, but I'll show you some of the way this organizes things automatically. You could archive it and you could order a photo, which is really interesting or save it as PDF or save it as a video. Some really cool options under every single photo here that you have. Now, in this case, I don't want to do any of that, but I just want to show you what was available here and including the order photo option using canvas or photo prints or books. So, so useful. Okay, so that's the home page, the photos page. Let's go to search. This is where this becomes even more powerful. So you see on top here, now I have to blur this just for people's identity. I'll keep the dogs in here, but you see people and pets. I did not create these folders. So let me click a pet here. Now this is what happened here. When Google photo brought these into the app here, you could see that it recognized that these are photos of my dog and he made an album for me. That's incredible. And it kind of freaked me out the first time I saw it, but now everything is organized. I could click on any dog, any cat or any person and see all the photos on my phone that are backed up on Google photos here on this section. Really, really cool. So again, I'll go ahead and blur this here, but these are just all the different people, all my friends, all my family members here that I've taken a picture of and Google photo has organized all of them into different folders. So if I click on any of these, it opens a folder with all those people in it. You could go ahead and search things based on location, based on photo type. 
even based on people's name, if you took the time and gave people name when you're organizing your photos. Very, very powerful search bar up here. And it also organizes things by map based on the metadata of the photo, meaning where was the picture taken? And Google does a good job explaining how they know that. And then by things too, so menus, towers. <laughs> I took pictures of towers. Let's see what that looks like actually, that's funny. So here are just the towers in Disney World. When I was making a commercial there, it looks like it's pulling those over here. So that's really cool. And you could see other categories here, screenshots, selfies, videos, 360 photos, everything is put in categories. I did not do this. This was done by Google Photos. Everything was organized for me under the search tab. Let's go to library now. And library, I showed you how to make something a favorite, but once you do, they show up over here. If you archive things, they also show up over here. So these two folders I use all the time. And if you move something to the trash, they will move over here and you could empty the trash at any time. And then you could create more albums over here. It looks like the Disney album and cars and dogs, all these albums I created and put things there. This is just copy of my mobile upload. So this was automatically created for me. But I really like this page, especially the favor icon and creating albums here on the other pages and then viewing them over here. So you could see some of the jobs that I've done in Hawaii, they show up over here. And some of the things, even my Facebook profile pictures were backed up over here from iOS, from some of the commercial shoots, everything shows up very nice and organized over here. Now, what if you wanna share a photo? Let me show you how that works. Just press the share icon right here on any photo and it's gonna show you people you could text this to, it's gonna let you use AirDrop if you're on a Mac, send it as a message, copy it, use Instagram, email, all that is available for you. But I'll show you how to do this with a whole album right now, it's really useful. So here's a whole album and to share a whole album, I could add photos to it as well here if I wanna add more, but I could just press share right here and I get the same exact option. And people that are part of Google Photo will show up over here, I could search them. And this will use their Gmail here or their Google account here to share. So if I select someone here and press send, it will send that Google Photo album to them. And that's one of my other favorite features about this app because I could share not just one photo, but an entire album and I could order prints of one photo or in an entire album using this method. And I'll show you one last thing here, which is you could add more description to a picture to make it easier to search later on. So on a picture, press the three dots on top of it. And you could see that I gave this one a description here, but you could type out whatever you want and then use whatever you typed out here for search. So it's just giving more information to Google Photo about what this picture is and you could see more about the details of it here. So it knows the date and time it was taken it knows my description, it knows my location, and it knows probably who's in the picture again, which I showed you with that recognition of creating those different folders. And at any time, I could change any of that, including editing the date and time over here. And that's your introduction to Google Photos, and I specifically wanted to focus on the mobile app, but now everything that you learned here applies on the Google Photos website as well at google.com slash photos. And as long as you use the same Google account to sign in and backup and sync is activated, you'll get to access all your photos on your computer now that you've added to your phone's app here. Thanks so much for watching. I post these type of videos every single day on this channel with over a thousand videos. And I hope to catch you next time.